In this video, we're going to continue to explore the PE file format by looking into thread local storage, or TLS callbacks. TLS callbacks are used by malware authors to execute code before the main entry point of the program. This technique is primarily used as an anti-debugging technique, allowing malware to execute before the debugger takes control at the program's entry point. So in this video, we'll explore the internal PE file format structures that indicate TLS callbacks are enabled, We'll talk about a couple of caveats, and we'll also look at trying to get a general sense of how prevalent this technique still is by using Yara. Finding this series on the PE file helpful? Take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't hesitate to leave a comment or question below as well. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this video is going to focus on TLS, or Thread Local Storage, and the, you know, the perspective that we're going to take is that of a malware analyst reverse engineer. That's the reason that we care about it. That's the reason I'm talking about it. Um, now, this is a technique that maybe isn't as prevalent as it used to be, and I'll talk a little bit more about that here towards the end of this video. Uh, but it is something that I've, I do occasionally encounter, and I was actually working on a project that um, really required me to deal with it head on. And so I just wanted to document my experience here um, and, and add it really to the, the playlist of PE file information that I have on the channel, um, just for the sake of completeness. Uh, now, you can find a definition for TLS on MSDN. Uh, it has a very legitimate use, and the, the kind of the TLDR for us malware analysts and reverse engineers is that this is an opportunity for code to execute before the normal entry point of a program. So malware authors have abused this over the years in order to get their code to execute before, you know, maybe we would recognize um, that that code is executing and we would be focused on main or after or the entry point of the program or after. So. What I want to start with now, we have a very basic and rudimentary understanding, um, is how we identify the structure. And this is, again, another area where Microsoft provides a definition. If we look at, and we've been exploring throughout this entire playlist, and really throughout a lot of my videos, you'll see different elements and aspects of the PE file format. At the, the end of the image optional headers, we have this array of image data directories. And each image data directory contains a virtual address and a size. And they are actually laid out in this particular order. Now, when it comes to TLS, this will be the 10th entry, uh, index 9, for TLS, or, th or Thread Local Storage. So um, as you've seen like in previous videos, one way we can identify if a binary has, or at least potentially has TLS uh, callbacks, is if it has an entry here in this the TLS storage data directory. That is, there is a virtual address and a size. Now, if it does, it will point to a structure, and I found this structure identified in the Windows NT headers that you get from the software development kit. This will be defined then as an image TLS directory, as you see here, and there are a number of different members to this structure, but really the only one we have to care about is this fourth member, that is the address of callbacks. This will be a pointer to a location in the PE file then, um, that begins a number of function callbacks. So these are actually going to be the locations of the code of the functions that get called during the initial execution of the binary before the entry point is actually called itself. So this is the member and what this points to what we want to care about. Now, um, I wanted to start with a basic sample and I found one. Um, there are a number of them out there, but I think uh, a great resource just in general is the unprotected um, unprotect project unprotect.it is the url here um, and they have code snippets for a c plus plus program this is going to look very similar if not almost identical uh, to the sample that i found i can't quite recall now if i use this sample or or something very similar um, but the idea is to get a program be able to compile it so that i i, I know i have tls callbacks and then do some of the analysis uh, so that's what i did here now, if we look at this program, essentially what I want to point out is that we have the TLS callback. This is just going to pop a message box that says, you know, title TLS message callback. And then in main, we're going to have a printf for hello world. And so what you're going to see here, I'm going to compile this, we're going to run it, and we're going to actually get this message box before main is entered. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile that. And then we'll run the executable and you'll see there's our message box. I don't know if it matters if it's yes or no. And then finally we add our hello world. So maybe that went a little too quick. Uh, let's just run that one more time, right? You can see in our console, there's no hello world. 
Uh, we can click our message box. Okay, there it was. All right, so we at least had one, um, and that would indicate that that callback was executed before main. Okay, so um, we have a program, we have a binary. Now, as again, as malware analysts and reverse engineers, typically it's the binary that we want to analyze. And so I'm gonna start, much like I have in more recent videos, we're gonna look at this kind of two ways. The first one is with 010, uh, the second then will be with Malcat. Um, here I already have the program open, and we have the uh, the different, well, the PE file template ran. You can see under the NT headers, the optional header, we'll scroll down here to the data directories. Um, and then if we scroll, well, once we expand that, we have our TLS directory, and there we go, right? We have values for both the virtual address and the size to indicate then that there there is a, a, a let's go back and I'll show you uh, this structure right here. Right, there, there is something that's going to point to this image TLS directory structure. That's all that that's telling us at this point in time. If there are actually callbacks, then this has to point to a series of function addresses. And that's something that I have found here in just a little bit of research for this video that isn't always going to be the case. Okay, so if we go back to 010, um, 010 does usually a pretty good job here of calculating these are virtual addresses and calculating them to the file offset. And so uh, we can just use that 17070 if we wanted to look at the structure uh, in memory in or I mean you know, on disk on this in this file. So I'll do a Control G uh, to bring up the go to, and then this will bring up. This is actually where uh, you know if 010 has the ability to parse this information. Um, I don't think it's output anywhere else here in the template. So I'm just looking at the template results and I don't see that. Right, so it, it's we kind of lose the ability to analyze these TLS callbacks at this point. Um, if we go to this location, then, right, what this is telling us is that this is the beginning of that structure, and if it's the fourth member, right, each member was a D word. Let's look at that structure again, right? D word, D word, D word, D word. So those are going to be four byte members, four byte values. Um, if we just calculate, that means that this will actually be the address two or the beginning of the TLS callbacks themselves. This is not the first callback. This is a pointer to basically an array of function pointers. So this value here, this would be address 41314C. And let's just pull that up into a calculator. So 41314C. Uh, and what we have to do if we want to figure out where this actually resides, and I've done this in a number of videos, is we need to convert this virtual address into a file offset. And the way to do that is to just simply go to our section headers and we want to look for which section this is going to be the closest to based off of the virtual address. So um, 13, 14C, that would be the raw offset from the image base. And if we look at the section header here, the virtual address, that is at 1A, right? So we know that this, this is lower than that. So let's see if maybe this our data section, that virtual address is at 13000. So that actually is the closest, 1314C. Okay, so let's take this address, we'll subtract the image base, 400,000 hex, that gives us the raw offset. Now we know that there's a section that starts at 13000. So if we subtract that, minus 13000, that gives us the raw offset into that section, dot R data, now all we need to do in order to figure out what where this offset is in the file is just add the pointer to raw, right? You see this pointer to raw, 11A00. So we'll just add that, 11A00. And there we go, 11B4C. So now we can go 11B4C. And this is our first function pointer. So this is actually at address 401000. It's saying that there is a callback because there is an address here. We had a we had an ad, we had a function pointer for that member defined right here, address of callbacks, and then that's where it pointed to. Okay, so what does this help us with? Well, this would tell us then if we were to reverse engineer this binary, uh, which we'll we'll look at this in just a moment, uh, that that would be the address of the callback. And you'll see tools like IDA, because they know about TLS callbacks, will identify this for us. So it makes it, of course, a little bit easier. Uh, we don't want to have to, we wouldn't have to do all of this manual parsing and navigation. 
Um, now you're probably already thinking that you know I don't really want to have to do all of this calculation every time I want to look at TLS callbacks, and uh, that's a very true statement. So uh, two things we can do here. Let's actually just look at this in IDA just to confirm, since we just went through and calculated the address of that first callback. So I'm just going to open this up with the free version of IDA. Now we're going to get some signature messages. We don't really need to care about those at this point in time. Uh, now you'll notice IDA is going to navigate us to main as it normally does. There we go. We're in main. But if you hit control E, this will also pull up an entry point. And here you can see that IDA says, hey, there is a, a, a TLS callback at, uh, let's see if I have the zoom right here, right? Address 401000, which is what we just calculated. So now we can double click on that. And you'll see there is our our message box that we saw earlier uh, when we looked at the source and when we ran the program. So all of that adds up, and that's how we actually can calculate those uh, where those those callbacks begin if there are addresses available. Um, now there's an even easier button if we use Malcat. You'll see that I already have Malcat open, and I've already got the TLS.exe executable. So off to the side here we have structures. There is indicating that there is a TLS directory because of the presence here. So once you select that, you'll see here is the full structure as we saw defined in the Windows headers. And particularly, there is the fourth member, which is the callbacks address. So we can just select that. I find selecting it up here in this, uh, up here in this structure view shows us the actual TLS callbacks. And it says, okay, there's there's one callback essentially, and that's at address 401000, which we already calculated. Okay, um, here's just another view. If we go back and select the TLS directory, TLS callbacks, and then we can select the actual address here and we'll get some disassembly. So now we can very quickly go from identifying that as a TLS callback uh, to where is the callback and what is the actual code there? Okay, so you can see that with a lot of our tools, they're doing all of that raw parsing and calculating and understanding of those structures for us so that we don't have to waste our time uh, doing what we did earlier. But I like to show kind of how all of the pieces fit, where those structures are located and how to navigate them on disk. Because um, if you find yourself, for example, making tools or updating tools, especially those that are working with parsing PE files, it'll be crucial that you understand how to navigate the PE file um, both on disk and in memory. Okay, so I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this video that uh, how prevalent are these? These are always something that is, uh, you know, that comes to my mind, right? Um, I haven't run across any samples that have TLS callbacks recently, at least nothing that I can remember. So I was curious, well, how, how prevalent are they? And, and the first thought that came to mind was that I write a very simple YAR rule. As you can see, here's the condition. I'm just saying, hey, is this a PE file? And if so, um, does it have entries for the virtual address and the size, there's just my simple check for the data directory at index nine or element 10. Um, now, what I found and where I ended up running this, and if you have a better way of detecting TLS callbacks with Yara, please let me know. This was the best I could come up with. I did a little bit of searching and it seemed like it, just by looking at the documentation, this was the most straightforward way. Um, I took this rule and I just went to Yara FI. If you're not familiar with Yara FI, it is one of the abuse.ch projects. And uh, essentially what you can do is you can come here and upload rules and do some hunting. So uh, let's see, I've got, you detect, okay, so there I am. And you can see that, uh, let's see, the last, this is the last match. So I've been, it's been running for a couple of weeks, been meaning to record this for a while. Oh, uh, here we go, yeah, uh, date added 726. So yeah, it's been running for a little while since I recorded this. Um, but you'll see there's actually 219,000 samples that have uh, t that that you know, those entries in that data directory. Now, what I have come to realize is that all that actually represents is that the PE file um, has this structure right here, right? And what you'll find is then that even though it has this structure, it doesn't necessarily have any TLS callbacks. So there may not be a pointer to any functions and therefore no actual TLS callbacks. So maybe a, a bit of, uh, it can be maybe a bit, a bit misleading based off of this Yara rule and the fact of whether or not a, a binary actually has TLS callbacks. So an example of that, 
All right, I downloaded a bunch of those that you saw previous. Um, I need to have my desktop, so let's just uh, open this desktop, bring up Malcat. All right, I think this is one. So we can go to the, the TLS directory, all right, and you'll see that there is a TLS callback. Let's open it up here. I think this is a little bit easier to look at, uh, but you'll notice that there is no address here. Sorry, so it has the directory structure. It even has the address, the pointer to the beginning of this potential array of function pointers. Uh, but when we look at the, the data there, there are no callbacks. So this in fact has no callbacks. And if we were to run the program, there'd be no TLS callback code to execute. Ida wouldn't identify one either because there's no function pointer here. Uh, so there's a number of hits that I received um, with that one YAR rule that were this. They had the structure, they had a pointer to uh, an array of callbacks, but there were no actual function pointers in those callbacks defined. I've got one more file here just to prove that uh, some of these do in fact have callbacks. So we can open up this executable here. Uh, and again, I didn't, I picked about a dozen of these at random from my YARAFI results and just looked at them until I found one that had an actual callback entry. So here you can see uh, we have TLS callbacks. There's an entry. We can click on that. We can see, oh, okay, there's some code. Something's happening here. You know, it may or may not be worth uh, spending some time investigating based off of further analysis and basic triage of this binary. But that wasn't the goal of the video to do the actual analysis, but rather just to talk about what TLS callbacks are, um, the structure and how they're represented and stored in the PE file, uh, and then how we can parse those using a number of different tools. So hopefully that was um, everything you were hoping to get out of this video when it comes to talking about TLS callbacks. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free. The comments are open for this video. I'd love to hear back from you. Um, but uh, again, hopefully this is a good illustration of, of not only identifying these structures, but then even some of the challenges with things like Yara and maybe detecting, you know, just identifying the TLS structure itself isn't enough. Okay, that's it. Hope everyone enjoyed the video and look forward to seeing you in the next one.